Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn how to do photometry of astronomical images. What is photometry? Photometry means measuring the brightness of an object in an image or essentially we want to calculate the brightness of a star or a galaxy or asteroids or a nova or supernova. How do you calculate the brightness? In an image, you simply want to look at how many photons you got from that source. Now, when you measure the number of photons in a source, I would like to compare it with measuring the height of a building. When you express the height of a building, you are not really saying the building is at a height, a total height of 1000 meters above sea level. You measure the height with respect to the base of the building. Similarly, when you are measuring the brightness of a star in an image, you have to measure the brightness with respect to the sky. So photometry consists of first fitting the background and then measuring the counts or the number of photons effectively from a star or from any astronomical source above that background level. In today's tutorial, we will cover two steps. The main step, uh, step of course, is about using a tool for doing photometry. The tool we will use is called Aperture Photometry Tool or APT. Aperture Photometry is just one of the many methods that is used by astronomers for doing photometry of objects. The second part of the tutorial is to convert your basic images into the formats that, are, that can be used by Aperture Photometry Tool and that format is called FITS or Flexible Image Transport System. This is the format which is used for storing images and other astronomical data by all professional astronomers around the world. Astronomers all around the world use a particular standard format for saving files which is called FITS format which stands for Flexible Image Transport System. FITS is a lossless format which makes sure that any information that was recorded by the camera on the telescope is saved properly for you to analyze later. Now, if you are using a CCD camera for your observations, then very likely whatever software you use to acquire these images will allow you to save them in a FITS format. However, if some of you are using DSLR cameras, then it is quite likely that the images will be compressed down and saved as JPEGs. For that, you should make sure that you have changed your camera to save images in RAW mode rather than in JPEG mode. These images can be rather large, so make sure that for your astrophotography session, you are carrying enough memory cards with you. Because the rough rule of thumb is that if you are saving a monochrome image, then the image size can be about 2 to 4 megabytes per megapixel of your camera. So if you have a 5 megapixel camera, we are looking at a 5 to 10 MB image in monochrome mode. You can also save the images in RGB mode if you want. The option is entirely yours. The question then of course is how do you convert these raw images into the FITS format that we will need in the second part of our tutorial. And there are many many ways to do this. There are several free software which you can download for converting raw images to FITS. And there are easy windows installable files which you can install for running these software. Some of them even offer what is called a batch mode in which you can give an entire folder full of all the raw images you have taken in the night and it will convert all of them to FITS file. For now, instead of using any downloaded tools, I am going to show you how to use an online service to achieve the same effect. This service is called nova.astrometry.net. Now, astrometry.net was written with the primary function of doing astrometry and is widely used by professional astronomers around the world. Astrometry means mapping of every star to its actual in your image to its actual position in the sky. So if you upload any file to the nova.astrometry.net service, what this service will do is it will find all the sources in your image, compare them with a large master database, and then using that, calculate what the array and deck or right ascension and declination for each pixel in your image actually is. Nova.astrometry.net accepts a wide variety of for file formats for upload, including raw images. And when the image processing is done, the output page actually gives you the option to the download your results in various formats, including FITS files. And this is the format which is important for us. So we will download this FITS file, which is usually simply called new-image.fits. And we will save so that file to this website, to your which local is computer and we will use that file in our APT Astrometry process. Astrometry actually stands for converting raw images into a format that will have the array and deck information encoded into the image itself. So the image will have a formula which tells a computer program what the array and deck, right ascension and declination of every single pixel in the image is going to be. 
So I have an image which is saved on my computer here, which has an extension called .cr2. This is a raw format which is saved by Canon cameras. And on astrometry.net, I'm going to go to the upload page, which I've already opened here. Um, and I've also got results there. So I'll go to the upload page and I'm going to go to choose file, go to my desktop and here is the file. So I will upload the file. This is a large file, about 15 MB. So it may take some time to upload. What astrometry.net is going to do, and I'll show you some results on this page from a previous upload, is that it will take any picture of this sort and it will compare it with a master database that it has and try to infer the point of the sky where this image was taken. And after doing this calibration, so let's see what the status is here in the meanwhile, it is still uploading this file. Raw files, as I had mentioned, can be pretty large. This particular file is about 15 megabytes. So after calculation, it is going to tell you what the center, right ascension and declination of the image is, what the size of the image is. So this particular image is pretty large, about three by two degrees on the sky. And it tells you how many arc seconds per pixel and so on. It also shows you what part of the sky the image was taken from and a zoom in map of that region. If you want, you can also look at annotated versions of the image, which will tell you what major objects or stars were present in the image. But what is of interest to us is this particular point here, which shows an image called new image dot fits. Note that there are also several other fits files, a WCS, RDLS, AXY and CORE, but these are specialized files, which we do not have interest in. So to download this, what you simply have to do is you have to save the linked file and you save it on your hard disk. So any raw file that you had uploaded will now have been converted into a fits file. The simplest and most straightforward method for doing photometry is called aperture photometry. In this process, you select an aperture or a region, usually just a circle that is centered on the object of your interest and you measure all the counts that your camera has recorded within this region. As I had mentioned before, we also need to do background subtraction. So we'll use a slightly more advanced algorithm to estimate the background as well. So what we do is we will select a circle that is centered on the object of interest, say a star, and we'll select another torus around it, an annular region from which the tool should estimate the background and it should subtract the average sky background from the brightness of your star to make sure that you are measuring only the brightness contributed by the star and not any contribution of city lights or of the full moon which may be present when you took your images. In the aperture photometry tool, there are quite a few algorithms that you can use and many settings that you can tweak. When you launch the tool for the first time, you might be overwhelmed by the interface, but don't worry. For a first time user, you can simply ignore most of the settings that are provided to you. And as you get more and more comfortable with the tool, you can start tweaking the advanced settings and optimize them to your requirement. So to begin with, let's just download APT or Aperture Photometry tool from the website aperturephotometry.org. This tool was written by a professional astronomy researcher and it has been extensively compared with many other tools that are used by professional astronomers and the results are completely identical. So when you are using this tool for doing your photometry, you can be very sure that the results that you get are authentic. So go to the website aperturephotometry.org, download the tool. It is available as an installation file for the Windows, Mac or Linux. Website, Install it and then let's continue to the screencast of how to use the tool itself. Download page which lists the download options for various types of aperture photometry tool. So if you are a Windows user, you want to start by downloading the .zip file. It may take some time to download. It's about a 31 MB download when I last downloaded it. And you should install the exe file. Once you are done with that, what you will get is an icon on your desktop, which looks something like this one. So this is the aperture photometry tool and you can simply open it by double clicking on the icon. In this case, I am using the Mac version of it, but the Windows version looks identical. When you open the Aperture Photometry tool, there are several options that are available on the screen. The main thing that we want to see is this window on the right side, 
which is going to show the image that you load and this blue text at the bottom which is the magnitude that you have measured for any source. We will start by going to this upper left and go to open image. In my case I have saved some images on my desktop so I'll open one of them and here is the image that has been loaded into the right side panel. There are scroll bars here which allow you to scroll the image if it is very large and this panel over here shows you a zoom in of wherever you have placed your cursor on this image. So as I move my cursor around the display seen here changes. So here I can see a nice galaxy, I can see some stars here and you'll notice that the stars are not all perfect circles which happens very often depending on the quality of tracking of your telescope and the atmospheric conditions. You can also change the zoom in both of these panels by changing the magnification settings over here or the settings over here. The first thing we want to do is we want to go into the more settings box that is saved here and that shows you a lot of settings. What we want to do is we want to change this sky algorithm to something called model B. So here it is, I have selected model B, first click on apply settings and then click on close window. Before closing the window, I am just going to show you that this has many many other settings. For example, if you know the gain of your camera which is available for CCDs, then you can put it here. If you know certain other parameters, then they can be given as input parameters here. For beginners, we don't need to worry about any of those settings. Once you have clicked on apply settings, you can close the window. Now we go to our image here and suppose I want to measure the brightness of this star. The way we measure the brightness is always by comparing the brightness with respect to a known standard. As all of you know, one of the most commonly used systems is the Vega system of magnitudes in which Vega is defined to be magnitude zero. In our case, what we will do is suppose you want to measure the brightness of an asteroid or a variable star then from wherever you decided to select the images, you can get a reference magnitude. For, for example, reference magnitudes and reference stars are available on AVSO databases. If not, you can go online and get the information from a catalog like the USNO catalog. For now, let's assume that you know the brightness of this star at the center of our image and you want to use that to measure the brightness of this star at the upper right. So the first step is you simply click on the reference star. Once you click on it, you will see that it has shown a reticule. This reticule now consists of a blue circle at the center, a red circle at the center followed by a cyan and yellow circles outside. The central circle is the annulus that it has used for measuring the brightness of the star and the regions around it were used to estimate the background. What it did is that after using these values, at the lower left it has given you the magnitude as minus 12.58. Now we know that the full moon is almost minus 13 and the star is clearly not as bright as the full moon. And the reason for this is that this magnitude is given without a zero point. So what it means is you can use this magnitude, you can use this reference star's magnitude as measured here to calculate a correction factor. Let's say that in when you took the reference catalog, this star was known to you to be 12th magnitude. So I'm just going to open a text editor here and I'll note down that the actual magnitude of this star, so actual magnitude was 12.3 suppose and the measured magnitude which we copy from down here is minus 12.58 minus 12.58. So that gives us a zero point or a correction factor which is simply the difference between these two values. So it is 12.3 minus minus 12.58 which is equal to 24.88. So this is our zero point correction factor. Now let's go back to our image and we have our target star here which suppose is a variable star and we want to measure its magnitude. So I come here again and I click on this star. Now those of who, uh, you who are watching the screencast, you will occasionally see some yellow clicks like this or green circles appearing. These are being used by my screencast software and you will not see them when you click around on your screen. Don't worry about that. 
So I've clicked on this star and again it has shown you the source and background regions. And what it is showing us down here is that the dimensionless magnitude is minus 12.779. Note that the uncertainty is given as plus infinity. So it means that it has not yet estimated what the uncertainty in these magnitudes is. For those of you who are interested in knowing more details about this, you can go to this top menu called About and Help. And from that menu, it will show you what the different algorithms used for measuring uncertainties are and how you can use them. For now, let's just go back to the text editor and for my target, the magnitude measured here is my minus 12.78. Now I have to apply the zero point correction. So I'll say actual magnitude is equal to minus 12.78. Minus 12.78 plus the zero point correction, which is 24.88. Now, in case you are not feeling up to these calculations by yourself, then of course you can use a calculator. I'm just going to be lazy and use that. So I have 24.88 minus 12.78, and that tells me that the actual magnitude of this star is 12.1. So there we have it. We used a reference star, which was available here and we calculated the magnitude of our target, which is at the top here. So I'm going to go through these steps one more time for another image of the same field so that you can now just sit back and follow these steps. So I go to open image. It has asked me if I want to clear all comparator images and I will say yes, clear all images. Again, for those of you who wonder what the other options are, you can go and read the help files. So I had opened image 18 first and now I'm going to open image 19. So here I, we can see at the bottom that image 18 was open at first. I'm going to ima open image 19. So here is image 19. Things have moved around a bit. Here's my reference star again and I'm going to click on it to measure the magnitude. The magnitude in this again was 12.58. This won't always happen. Sky settings might have changed between images. But last time we measured it, it was also 12.58. And using that, now I'll click on our reference star again. So first, from 12.58, as we did last time, we calculate a zero point correction, which is 12.3, which is the actual magnitude, which you know from a catalog. Subtract the minus 12.58, and that gives you the zero point correction. Then you click on any star for which you want to measure the magnitude. Let's choose a different one this time. So I'll choose this star. Suppose this is our target and it is telling me that the magnitude is minus 10.91. So I'll note that down. Second target minus 10.91. And now I will apply the zero point correction. So I have 12.91. Uh, sorry, the zero point correction factor is 24.88. And you subtract the magnitude 10.91 and that gives you 13.97 usually at the level of uh, at the quality of images that you see here you would probably not want to trust the second digit of magnitude so the actual magnitude that i will note down is simply from 13.97 i'll round it off and i'll call it 14.0 so there you have it this was our second target star up here and its actual magnitude using a correction calculated from this reference star is 14.0.